So, um, Mr. Grant, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate your uh, joining this session. Uh, to begin with, would you please uh, introduce yourself, uh, your background, and also experiences so far? Yes, very pleased to meet you all. Um, my name is Dougie Grant, uh, and I'm currently the Managing Director of in Europe for Nihon Cyber Defense, NCD. And prior to that, I have had 30 years service in the public sector, working in the military, in law enforcement, and in the National Cyber Security Centre, which is part of GCHQ, which is the UK's um, intelligence agency that looks after cyber and cyber security. Um, during the past 30 years, I have developed a lot of capability and understanding about cyber threats, about the response to cyber attacks and cyber incidents, and developed the, the national response in the UK to responding to these very significant cyber attacks that we are seeing increasing on a weekly basis at the moment. Thank you very much. And uh, as you know that in Japan, um, the ransomware is one of the major the risk or threat to the company for the government sector here. And uh, we are wondering I mean, how best to you know, uh, respond to such incident. And uh, I'm sure that you have you know, kind of handled uh, so many you know, incidents while you were with NCC. And out of your uh, experiences, we will be very much appreciated if you can share uh, kind of maybe the five things that you have observed here, uh, the, the mistakes or the challenges that victims will face in such incident. Yes, and, and, and you're, you're right. Over the past um, 12 months in NCSE, um, I dealt with over 800 significant incidents that affected the UK and that affected business and industry predominantly, but also other government entities. And by far, we've, we've ransomware is the number one threat facing the UK. And that's been articulated again by the, the head of um, the National Cybersecurity Centre this week in the UK. Now, the response to ransomware is slightly different than the response to, to other forms of cyber attack. And over the num last number of years, we've identified some key um, aspects that organisations need to take. And we've identified where this has gone wrong in many incidents. So. I think I'll, 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 I'll outline them just five key areas. So the first one is the, the technical response. And we see many organizations that when a ransomware attack um, is detected, they will seek their, to implement their backup regime very quickly. And we all know about the importance of having that backup regime in place and having effective offsite backups. But unless you know exactly how the attack has occurred and you can identify the way the attackers got in, and you can absolutely categorically say that the attackers are not still on your network or haven't left any back door, then if you put your backups in place and you try and recover really quickly, you will be targeted again and you will hit again. And unfortunately, we've seen that on so many occasions that organizations haven't taken the time or brought experts in to actually identify how the attackers got onto the network and plug those gaps, stop those, those access points, and made sure that the actors have no access to the network before you recover um, your data and your, your systems, then unfortunately you will be targeted again and it will be even more catastrophic because you won't have any backups to, to recover from in that case. So just to summarize that particular point is make sure that you understand how it happened, when it happened, and is it still going on before you, you put your backups in, in place. And unfortunately we see many organizations just rush to try and recover and it, it's catastrophic results at that point. I think the second um, aspect I would look at is the importance of the data. Now we know from the way that ransomware has evolved that it used to be just encryption and then it was encryption, but there would also be data exfiltration and then there'd be data encryption, exfiltration, and then exposure either on dark websites or on the clear web. We're now seeing that develop into ransomware actors actually contacting journalists and contacting suppliers, contacting customers and saying, look, we have data from this organization. And it's actually encouraging organizations to try and pay a ransom by having this, this single, double, uh, triple, or even quadruple extortion demand now going on to organizations. 
But the fundamental problem is that many organizations don't understand how to mitigate the impact of the exposure of the data. Now, on some occasions, and over the past number of years, we've had occasions where people's lives have been put at risk because of the sensitivity of the data. But in the majority of cases for business and industry, it's about financial impact on, on the clients or suppliers. And unless we understand what the data we're holding is and how do we mitigate the impact of that data if it's exposed, we will, we will have reputational challenges, we'll lose a confidence with our customers and suppliers, and, and that can be as damaging as the technical impacts. So we need to identify what the data is that's affected and how do we mitigate the impact of it, be it financial, be it um, intellectual property, or, or whatever the data is. So we need to be able to analyze that and have a plan and strategy of how to make sure that the actors, if they do expose this or they, they do publish it, or they do pass it to other parties, that we are ready and prepared for that and, mit and reduce the impact of that. So that's the second one, that we need to understand the importance and significance of the data that we are holding and have a plan. The third area um, is about the attribution and investigation about who the actors are. And we see many organizations will try and engage with the actors when they get the ransom demand. And sometimes they'll, they'll want to pay just to make this incident go away. But we really discourage um, victims from engaging directly with the actors without support and without experts to be able to guide that. And to, if I may give an example, one of the first things we do if we decide to engage with the actors is to say, well, what's the proof of life? And the proof of life is from kidnap and extortion that we, we dealt with in the physical world. But we say, show us what data you have, give us a sample of your data, and let's see that you're not actually just trying to, to scam us or, or, or bluff us in some way. Um, and on some occasions, we'll find out that the actors actually haven't exfiltrated the data. They are unable to produce any of the data that they claim to have exfiltrated. They may have deleted the logs from our network, so we can't see whether the victim has actually exfiltrated the data. And on some occasions, they will actually just disappear because it's, it is just a scam, and we're seeing that more and more now. So if we are going to negotiate with the actors, we need to know how to negotiate. We need to have experience in that. And again, I would advise victims do not engage by themselves with actors and trying to negotiate some sort of resolution. You need to engage the experts in this field who have experienced this and know how to coordinate um, the, and the, the, the discussions and negotiations. If we are going to pay, then we need to know how we're going to do that. Because in some occasions, in some jurisdictions, you may actually be committing a criminal offense to pay an extortion demand or a blackmail demand to the ransomware actors. In the US, Sometimes in the UK and in other jurisdictions, you may be committing an offence and you need to know how to avoid becoming a, a criminal yourself if you are going to take that line. It is about res resolving incident and you need to engage with the organisations such as Nihon Cyber Defence who are experienced in, in engaging and developing those negotiations. The fourth um, aspect I'd look at was about ensuring that you have a communications and public relations strategy in place. And this is about communicating the incident. Many of the customers and clients that the organization will have, many of the suppliers will realize very quickly that something has happened to the organization. Likewise, staff internally will be aware that something has happened because they won't be able to, to work properly. They won't have access to systems. So we do need a clear communication strategy from the outset or sometimes even in advance of an incident in our planning stage to say, what are we going to say and who are we going to say it to and how are we going to say it? So what are we going to tell our staff? Are we going to tell our staff that we've had a ransom incident? Because if we do tell the staff that, it will probably filter out and the other entities will become aware of that. Are we going to say it's just a cyber attack, a system disruption? Are we going to say we have suffered a ransomware attack? And if we are going to do that, how is that going to impact on regulators? How is it going to impact on government entities, on law enforcement as well, who may seek to engage with us when it becomes public, if we've not already engaged with them? So we need to understand very quickly and very clearly how we engage the communication strategy and what the impacts of that will be on our customer confidence, on our reputation. So having that in place in the early stages is very important. 
And many organizations, unfortunately, don't address the communication strategy and then will be significantly damaged by reputational issues and customer confidence, and then may be targeted by the data protection authorities as well. There are the four um, basic flaws that we see in many um, incidents uh, and the responses to that, but there's one last overarching one. And I think it covers a lot of the points that I've already addressed. And that is clear preparation and planning. And by preparation and planning, yes, I mean having a cyber incident response plan, but actually making sure you know where that is. Don't hold it on your system and your network, because if you lose access to your system or network, you won't be able to access it and you don't know what your response plan is. But having a clear offline or accessible incident response plan, but importantly, making sure everybody understands what that means and what's contained within it. And to do that, we highly recommend exercising that by bringing professionals in who are experienced with this and actually testing your response plan and making sure it works. Now, one of the key aspects to this is making sure you know who to contact and how to contact them. On many occasions, we've seen some of the ransomware actors targeting organizations at the time of most stress for an organization. So at the time of their peak productivity, their peak business time in the year, or as we saw recently on Thanksgiving in the US, we saw that, um, a significant attack against hundreds of organizations in the US over the Thanksgiving holiday because they knew that the network defenders and the management were not in situation to respond effectively. In the UK, we've seen the majority of attacks, we call it the, 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 the Friday nightmare. It's always on a Friday evening, people are going home for, the week, for their weekend and at five o'clock, six o'clock in the evening in the UK, we see the ransomware being detonated on networks because they know people are out of position, they know people can't respond effectively. Now, in many occasions, we know our organizations will say, we need help. We need a cyber incident response company to come and help us and manage the incidents and be able to advise us and guide us on the response. But without having that engagement prior to the incident, it means it can take days, sometimes weeks to negotiate contracts, to go through the various non-disclosure agreements. That's not an effective response. So what we would advise is that you are engaged early with a cyber incident management organization such as Nihon Cyber Defense on a retainer uh, situation so that you can lift the phone and ask for help. And that help will be with you within minutes and hours. And we start responding, mitigating, reducing the impact and working on the response, not days and weeks later. So that last overarching recommendation that we see is that many organizations um, are not prepared and ready for the incident. They don't know who to contact and they don't have the contracts in place for that support to be brought in to try and mitigate the impact. But in the UK at the moment, we estimate that 50% of business and industry will be affected by ransomware over the next 12 months. And that's going on the previous statistics from last year, but ransomware is increasing. So over half of organizations, certainly in the UK, and it's the same around the, the rest of the world, will be targeted to some degree by, by ransomware. By only by preparing now and making sure that you have the plans and processes and partners in place, will you be able to recover from that ransomware incident? And um, the best case that we had was an organization who were planned, who were prepared, who did have their partners in place, recovered in five days to full productivity. Many other organizations never recovered from it, but we want to make sure you are the organization that can respond and can recover effectively. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for sharing uh, your insight. And what you have mentioned is exactly what is happening here too. We actually had gone through several such incidents and uh, one client, of course I cannot mention the name, but uh, uh, they were attacked by ransomware and uh, they tried to recover from the backup, but the backup itself was actually corrupted or already malware was in it. So that uh, after um, maybe 10 hours of work and they thought that they went back to the, uh, the production, but actually the backup was corrupted. So that, you know, they had to do that again. It was nightmare. And the attack yeah. happened uh, late night. I mean, like uh, 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. on Friday night. So mm -hmm. exactly what you mentioned that 
but they knew, I mean, threat, threat actor knew that there are no, uh, not many people there so that they can do conduct their attack. And the company had a kind of, uh, you know, preparation, I mean, near uh, BCP, but uh, the BCP was not for, uh, tailored for the, uh, the cyber. It, it was more for other national disaster, natural disaster, but uh, the uh, BCP playbook actually did not, you know, work. So uh, what you mentioned today is exactly very applicable for uh, companies in Japan too. And I, again, thank you very much for sharing your thought. And uh, now we can talk about how, you know, Japanese corporations should be well prepared for such event, which will happen uh, sooner or later. Again, thank you very much for your time today, and uh, I hope we can continue this discussion further uh, in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.